Welcome to our episode of Moon Monkey. This week we're going to talk about the Shane Black directed movie The Nice Guys, and there will be spoilers. Uh, so the film starts in 1977 Los Angeles. Uh, with the opening scene of the film we see porn star Misty Mountains, who's killed in a car crash. Unusual circumstances. Uh, and then the film cuts to Russell Crowe's character, who acts as a sort of fixer, goes out, he gets paid to basically go beat people up who people want beating up or find people or do any any kind of odd job that people want. Uh, Paint the fence. Uh, uh, through, <laughs> through various uh, plots and twists, uh, he joins up with Ryan Gosling and the two of them set off to find a missing girl called Amelia. And so the film basically follows these two as they go through uh, worlds of porn, politics and automobiles. The film was directed by Shane Black, who's probably best known for uh, writing and directing Iron Man 3, but he also worked as a writer on things like Lethal Weapon 2, Last Action Hero, so that I guess if you've seen those movies, it gives you an idea of the kind of his style, yeah, what he was the going a- for. Action, yeah. action comedy. Not everybody loved Iron Man 3, but no. I'd say this is a really good movie, and if you like Lethal Weapon, or if you like Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, which I've never seen, but because I've seen Nice Guys... Yeah. And I want to go and see Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Yeah. Which I think was Robert, D- Robert Downey Jr. and Val Kilmer. Which mm. admittedly is, a, is again a strange pairing like Russell Crowe and, yeah. and Ryan Gosling. But I think I'd, I'd be interested to see that. But Shane Black's one of those directors. He is developing his own style. So if you mm. go see a Shane Black movie, you kind of have an idea of what to expect. Yeah. Or at least, yeah, know that he's pretty good at his job and yeah. <laughs> what he's doing. It's a very... Uh, yeah, like I said, the film's set in 1977, and it's very much evokes that world well. Even yeah. with the kind of por- like the porn stars and the and the politics, political corruption it covers, and the whole automobile thing, it's very much like set in that period and revels in those kind of ideas and tropes, I guess, of, yeah. of that genre. It, it, it pays a lot of kind of homage to that that kind of time. Yeah, and those kind of movies like the the 70s detective movie, yeah, or something like that. Because they don't really get made now. Yeah. Um, it w- that was the one thing that threw me. I mean, I know you thought it was hilarious that I thought the whole thing was uh, set in the mind of the young boy who we yeah, see at you, the start of the film. You got very stuck in the first scene. And yeah. you thought, oh, that's that's just all. And he's having a dream. I pretty much, like, yeah, after the first scene, I was so confused for the rest of the film about what this was meant to be. Because before seeing this film, I hadn't watched any trailers. I hadn't seen any reviews or media for it. So I honestly didn't know... That that it was just a straightforward nineteen seventies crime film, even, but what was throwing me was like, why is it set in nineteen seventy seven? Even even without having seen anything, I was worried that you <laughs> you thought it was so much deeper than it was. Yeah, you were looking for something that was Inception, I think. Yeah, and it just wasn't. I really liked it. Yeah, well, I tell you what threw me. Uh, part of, like part of the joy of this film is that there's a great sense of humor in it. And there's a lot of odd, offbeat things happen, a little oddball, maybe even slapstick humour at points. Yeah. Like the opening scene of the film, uh, we see a young boy, uh, it's the middle of the night, it's 1977 Los Angeles, he walks through his father's room and gets a porn magazine from under the bed and opens it out and it's got Misty Mountains there in the, the centrefold. And then as he's walking down, the car crashes through the house and he goes outside and sees her naked just as she looks in the, like in the magazine, but bloodied because like the car's just crashed and and dead, I think, or dying. Oh, she's she's dying. Yeah. She says something. Last, to him the she, last words. Yeah. How'd you, how'd you like my car, big boy, or something like that? Yeah. So then that's that's what threw me because it was so odd that I thought that can't be a coincidence. Maybe he's dreamt it. So I was expecting the next scene would be him waking up and like, oh, that was really weird. But it doesn't. It cuts straight to Russell Crowe. So then what was going through my mind was, oh, is this him? When he's older, like the boy at the start, is this mm. him? And there was so many things like that. <laughs> I don't so know I was, why you look for so so much depth. I was just trying to draw a connect because I was like, I don't know. Yeah, I was just trying to draw dots between things that just weren't there yeah. in, the, in the movie. Yeah, you created your own movie. Yeah, but the general plot of the thing is just really a crime caper, like I a think, fun. I find it pretty simple. <laughs> I find it pretty enjoyable. No, it is. The plot's really simple. Like, that's part of the reason why my mind was wandering, thinking it's more complex than it is. Well, saying it's simple, there are a lot of twists and turns in it, which I liked. But the, yeah, the general thing is fairly straightforward. 
But it's it is like one of those old fashioned crime films where you have yeah, they go and speak to people to try and gather evidence and then they get a clue which leads them on to the next place yeah. and they get another clue. It's like a mystery trail like a detective clue trail yeah. that they're following. Um do you want to talk about the actors? Yeah, we've got we've got Russell Crowe as Jackson Healy. Yeah, and he was really good in it. Yeah, he's played a kind of tough guy. Yeah. A fixer, as you put it earlier. But yeah, very, very funny. Uh, and it has a, a very striking blue leather jacket. Yeah. I, I, I did think it was funny to see him just, like, out of shape. Because when, yeah. when, when you see the posters, it looks though like, oh, they're really, like, tough mm. guys. And maybe even the title of the movie, you think, they're going to be really, like, well-built, athletic, like, chasing people down. But he's actually just, like, an overweight guy yeah. <laughs> who yeah. just goes around... With brass knuckles punching people in the face. He he was he looked he did I a mean, very good performance, but he he did look so out of shape in the <laughs> movie. I was like, is this for the movie or is he just really out of shape? I, I don't know because he, he was particularly out of shape in this movie. I mean, he just turned up like that, and Shane Black was like, oh, "Sorry, I'll write I'll write around it. I'll <laughs> I'll write a new whole new backstory." It's for not you. it's not that he wasn't. It didn't affect the performance or the the believability of the movie. It's just that yeah, he's yeah. certainly not gladiator. But that's the thing it adds to that comedy. Yeah, comedy of the thing. Um, and we had Ryan Gosling as Holland March. Who actually is a PI? Who actually is a private investigator? Yeah. He's licensed, and he's he's a he's a he's not a good private investigator. <laughs> yeah, he was hilarious. Yeah, like, he's, he's a very good comedy moment. Because I haven't really seen him in many comedy things before. No. I think he's most known for things like Drive, uh, Beyond the Pines, was it? Yeah, things like that, like quite serious. I mean, in The Big Short, he was kind of a comedy, but more just like a sleazy business. What's the one type. where he's in love with a doll or something like that? Oh, um, oh, I can't remember what it's called. If that comes to us later, we'll tell you. Yeah. Uh, you've got a, a really good young actress playing Holly March and Gowrie Rice from Australia, who played uh, Ryan Gosling's daughter. Oh yeah, she, in the movie, she was fantastic, yeah. and she carries a lot of scenes. Like she's mm-hmm. in it, she's yeah. in it a lot, and she's like really resource a resourceful character. The one thing that I, I, I said was maybe... Lars and the Real Girl, sorry. <laughs> oh yeah, that's it, Lars and the Real Girl. Yeah, like that was a comedy that Ryan Gosling was in, but that's, yeah, less so slapstick and laugh mm, out loud yeah. comedy. Oh it yeah, it's more, a different, different movie, yeah. It was very, like, dark comedy. But that's a fantastic film, though. But that's the thing, Ryan Gosling's so known for, like, being kind of a, kind of a serious actor or picking movies which are very... I don't know, a little strange. So it was it was funny to see him here just playing out and out comedy. Yeah, I it was like it was definitely a diff- diff- different scene having Russell Crowe yeah. act. But in Gowrie, very good, wasn't uh, she? Yeah, she was fantastic. Like one of the things that I said after the movie was I never quite like her character seems like kind of caught between. On the one hand, she's really resourceful and like a good fighter, and she she helps them solve a lot of the mystery because she finds the girl that they're looking for. Mm. Uh, she managed to stave off, like, a guy who's attempting to murder her. Like, she manages to do a lot of stuff herself. But then at other points in the movie, they kind of use her to get captured and, like, they have to go rescue her. So she's kind of caught between the two, like, roles that she's playing. For me, there was only one moment that that happened uh, at the end. Mm. Um, but, yeah, I think uh, it was not, like, a father-daughter relationship, but a mother-son, because she was more like the mother to Ryan Gosling. Okay, yeah. Yeah, because I, yeah. she was driving him around, she was looking after him, she was really solving more of the case <laughs> than the other two at points. I yeah, she was quite a, a, an impressive character. Um, we also had Matt Boomer, Bomber, yeah, Boomer, <laughs> uh, who played John Boy. Yeah, the the main villain in the main there. villain called John Boy. Yeah, spoiler alert. And you'll know him if you're a big fan of Magic Mike or Magic Mike XXL. Uh, yeah, which I've not seen. He wasn't in it too much though. He just kind of appeared at the end. He was he was hinted that a lot. Hinted yeah. that a lot. They built him up quite well, which was which, which was good. Uh, but yeah, at the end he was just pretty. He was pretty threatening though. Yeah, pretty threatening villain. Kim Basinger. She was in it. Who did she play? She was Judith Cutter. Oh, okay, the the head of the State Department. She yeah, or she, yeah, she was something like that. And she was also Amelia's mum. Yeah. So yeah, Amelia. That's that's the girl that they're looking through for through most yeah. of the thing. That's the that's the driving force behind the yeah. movie. Yeah, Margaret is, is Bailey. Ve- 
various people are are trying to hire yeah. Russell Crowe and Ryan Gosling to well, at first, this person. At first, they hire Russell Crowe to go and tell someone to stop looking Amelia for Amelia hires, hires Russell Crowe. Oh, yeah, yeah, she hires Russell Crowe to tell Ryan Gosling to stop looking for her yeah. or to stop looking for Amelia and pays him to do that. And then he goes and beats Ryan Gosling up. In and a then very later, funny scene, yeah. And then later, like, he comes back because he's like, oh, now actually I need to look for her. Yeah. So you need to help me. And, they, and they, they work together. Um, but yeah, the actress who played her, uh, Margaret Qualley, was it? Uh, she was she Thanks was so. really good. Mm, yeah. So like that was the main <coughs> the main people in it. Yeah, say. there uh, were there were a lot of kind of side characters yeah. and people who turned up like for a scene and yeah. But yeah, there it's, was two. It really is Russell Crowe and Ryan Gosling's movie and and uh, Gary Rice and Gary Rice yeah. who plays the daughter was. Yeah. They're the three nucleuses. Yeah. Of this movie. Fantastic. Uh, so yeah, the story of the film, uh, like we said, it's yeah, it's really just getting back to the, like seventies. If you if you like seventies crime films, you I think you'll love this because it's kind of it's kind of a tongue in cheek look, look at that period. Like there was a lot of humor involved, <laughs> especially like yeah, like the bit when they go to the porn stars party, and there's a lot of like stupid things happening. Mm. But it's it's yeah. it's like the kind of thing you would maybe see in Scarface or something like that, but just if it was a comedy people, rather than a serious film. People have said there's nods to Biggie Nights and Chinatown mm. and an early confidential because it's got um it's got Russell Crowe and it's got Kim Basinger as well. Yeah. So there's there's all those elements within it, but it is it is essentially for me like a, a buddy cop movie. The whole style very... of it, like when you saw uh, street shots at the beginning mm. and you got the pine trees and the the cars, like the old cars. Yeah, there's there's loads the of costumes, noise. everything. The, like the clothing, and there's like a little bit where Tower Records they go by Tower Records in LA. Yeah. And there's the Jaws two poster. Old Tower Records. Yeah, <laughs> for those people who remember. To wreck, is it? And even like there's a lot of stuff about near the comedy club and stuff, and mm. the, all the names on the the board are seventies. Yeah, there's a lot of little nods to that kind of era. Yeah, to like a throwback. Yeah. Uh, Nixon on the magazine. Nixon, there's a lot of yeah. <laughs> Nixon covering someone's yeah. genitals. Yeah, the dick pic. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so there's loads of stuff about the seventies, and there's loads about it's. It's not just, but there's there's more depth to it as well. I think with the the kind of sleaze and the pornography world mm. and the corruption of the and the smog and air quality in the auto industry. There's loads of stuff in there. It's not just them just mucking about. But yeah, that, that was the thing. It it was telling mm. like uh, like an intro. The the funny thing was the kind of story it was telling was the kind of story that they might have done in the seventies about pollution and corruption. But they're telling it in the modern day, but it totally it still completely fits because we still have the same problems, yep. like the same corruption. <laughs> the porn industry is still around. The cars are still polluting the atmosphere. Yeah. So that what was fun. That's one of the things that I found fun about it. There's like protesters protesting about clean air, and you can imagine like exactly the same thing happening today, even though this is set in the like late seventies. Mm. That was I found that kind of fun. Yep. I thought that was interesting. Um, yeah, a lot of humour in the movie as well, more th- more so than I expected, because I, I didn't know anything about it, I didn't know that it was going to be just a, like, flat-out comedy. <laughs> yeah, you're just still in dream sequences yeah. somewhere. Well, that was, the, even yeah. at the start, I was saying the, the bit, uh, you, like, you broke through a door, and, like, oh. everyone was laughing. Oh, because... that was hilarious. Oh, I love that so much. It, Ryan Gosling, the most inept private investigator yeah. in the world, wraps his, wraps his fist up, doesn't he? yeah. And then punches through the window and then slices his whole wrist. And there's blood just running down. Yeah, he wraps, his, yeah, he wraps something hilarious. around his fist so he can break the glass. Mm-hmm. But then just, yeah, cuts, basically cuts his wrist open. Yeah. And there's just blood spraying out. <laughs> and he's like, oh, God. That's a lot of blood. Uh, yeah, like, yeah. everyone in the theatre was laughing. But, but yeah, at that point, I was still thinking, oh, yeah, that's funny. But, like, overall, it's going to be, like, a serious movie. There's just, like, the one funny bit. Yeah. And then they just kept layering on, like, more and more ridiculous things. Till, like, at the end of the movie, the way they do it, like, it kind of builds. Till at the end, it's just out and out fast. Like, there's some ridiculous things happening at the end. Like, yeah. toppling off balconies and... Yeah. <laughs> like, the very final, like, gunfight scene had some good laughs in it yeah. as well. there's a lot of physical comedy. Yeah. It's a, it's a very physical movie. And, um... But that's things like Shane Black, I think, is kind of known for taking a film which could be a fairly standard film and a fairly boring thing, but just adding 
so many twists to it and adding his own style to it. Like, I love the introduction of Ryan Gosling in this movie. He's just sitting in a bathtub full, full of water in a suit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is just, like, a weird way to introduce the character, but it really makes it stick in the mind. Mm. And also kind of immediately you think, like, yeah, this guy's, like, there's obviously something not yeah. quite right with him that he's sitting in mm. a bath full of water. And that was it all the way through. Uh, a lot of points that, yeah, made us laugh. Like, when they tipped the tip the body over a wall. Yeah. And you expect, like, that's it. They just get rid of the body over the wall. But it just lands on, like, a dinner table. People sat having a picnic on the other side of the wall. But throughout it, you start to think they're both so inept and so everything goes wrong for them that anything they do, you're thinking, what's well, going to... Something's not going to go right here. There's got to be some kind of catch. Yeah. But it's, it's, an, it's a very funny movie. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, and, like, the, the scene in the bathroom where he... He hunts down Ryan Gosling again to get him on the case after he's after he's already yeah. beat him up and he's like, "Why are you here to see me?" And he's like on the toilet. That's a very funny scene as well. That's yeah, yeah. Of the scenes. toilet door keeps like keeps yeah. closing on him. And again, it's it's not something I really thought. Or oh, Ryan Gosling will be really amazing at this. Because or or Russell Crowe to be honest with you, I don't really think the two of them in a in a comedy together would have really thought would have worked yeah but it does work really well and uh, they, it's their kind of relationship and interactions that work so well and also the, uh, Holly and Holland the the mm. yeah, uh, Gosling and, his, and, the, and, and Gary working together yeah. they, they are kind of an odd couple yeah. in the movie but it, yeah somehow it works and also like just the the script is, is very fast paced and yeah but that's the thing, like, the the humour in it, if you're not expecting it, in some ways, if you're not expecting it, it's, be, it's better, because there's some really unexpected things. Uh, yeah, especially one scene in particular where they're driving down the freeway. <laughs> like, something happens which is so just unexpected that you think, like, has this movie just completely gone, like, <laughs> taken a turn here yeah. into something different? But... Uh, yeah, it was really good. So that was like, yeah, the main, the main, good points, the main strong points of the yeah. movie. I think the humor and the acting from the leads. Also, there's a character called Pornocchio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's not a bit. He's not. He's a not major a big character in the film. I have to admit. But uh, on, on the t- on the titles at the end, I was like, that's impressive. On the credits, I was like, they've named that guy. <laughs> You actually only see him. You only see him for a few seconds. He has, he has a line. line. He has a line. <laughs> he has one line, which was a good line, admittedly. <laughs> but um, so watch out for Pinocchio. Yeah, that whole party sequence I thought I thought was hilarious. I think like also I, I don't I don't know if this is necessarily a good point for the movie, but I think what like what I liked about Hail Caesar or what we liked about Hail Caesar was it did capture that kind of time period. Yeah, and this reminded me a lot of Hail Caesar with the setting of the seventies. And the little, the little nods, and yeah, the little nods, references within the within the movie world. Last thing you get more out of it if if you really love seventies mm. films, yeah, you really enjoy it. And also, it was very strong with the comedy undertone. It did have a good story going on, but there was also lots of comedy. Yeah, was, I liked Hail Caesar too. I thought it was quite a funny movie. Yeah, and this was this was more funny. I mean, me, it was. I a, I yeah, it was also like the way that it blended real violence and also porn. I mean, pornography is one of the central points of this movie. Like, that's... The whole thing is about a girl making a porn film and her mother trying to find her because she's been in it. That's but, what they initially tell you. But also it was about the corruption because the porn film was only made to highlight the corruption. Yeah. So it was... The two but, it, like, they managed to do that girl. but also had, like, the young girl in it going through this world. It really had, like, a humorous sensibility for things which are for usually... A dark, for a dark yeah, topic, yeah. Usually meant, like, quite dark... And also liberal use of violence as well. Like, mm, yeah, <laughs> I mean, a lot I, laughed, of deaths. I laughed a lot of times at just people <laughs> that got shot randomly in the background. Yeah, there was a lot of innocent bystanders <laughs> got injured in this movie. Yeah. Um, so negative points to the movie. Can I can I just say like the soundtrack was was really good. I love the soundtrack too. All right. For a good point before we go into bad. Oh um, yeah. Because there was a lot. There was a for like seventies music. There was the Temptations, Killing the Gang, Earth, Wind and Fire, The Bee Gees, Kiss in America, and there was just yeah, it was it helped a lot to the the feeling of the movie. Yeah, Bill, it really is yeah. a love letter to that period. Yeah, yeah. and like all the records, all the look, the costumes, yeah. everything is that period. Ryan Gosling's got a lot, a lot of good suits as well. Yeah, <laughs> that was the thing. The music like just really helps the movie kind of. Yeah, I did for on. me. That, that now we can go into bad. 
<laughs> okay. Um, I didn't have much that was bad. The only thing that I would say about the movie, it's not, it's not like a must-watch movie. Like, it, I laughed a lot through it, and I had a good time there, but I wouldn't be like, yeah, you have to go see this movie. Because at the end of the day, it is like a knockabout comedy. Yeah. That's I, kind of it. A bad point for me um, is the plot. The further into it you get, the less it makes sense. Like, <laughs> especially, like, the maybe, like, the third act, or the, the latter half of the movie. It's kind of getting a bit like, oh, what's going on here? Like, have you really thought this through? I have to admit, I only, I only really even... You thought it was a dream sequence, so you admittedly weren't falling either. I only understood the plot, like, coming up to the, like, the very end when they actually tied it all together and explained... Like, for the, for the first third of this film, I didn't know, like, who the Amelia character was, like, why he was after Amelia. But they don't really tell you that, though. So the whole thing is, like, you're watching because it's like, I... You're uncovering the mystery along with them, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. But I, 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 I was also struggling because I thought it was a dream sequence. Yeah, yeah, you were, you were way off the bat. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I would, overall, though, like, that is a bad... But, I mean, it's just, to be honest with you, for me, the story is kind of secondary. It's all about the two of them playing off each other. Yeah. And kind of solving this mystery. I just... And I did, I did have, like I said, did have depth with the sleaze and the corruption and the air quality and stuff like that. Yeah. So there's more to it, but I just thought overall, near the end, the the plot wasn't really yeah. working for me entirely. There were, I mean, there were a couple of jokes that, that fell flat, but again, overall, like I thought that, overall the humour was really good. There were just a couple that didn't really work, and they used them like a few times, and it never worked, like when they did it. Um, but yeah, that's really it. So I would definitely, if you, if you love the period, mm. I would definitely recommend it. If yeah. you like 70s movies... I would, I would reckon, I would say this is Mid Monkey approved. Yeah, I'm going to approve this movie. Uh, I think that it's just got such a good script, such a good script, and the interactions between uh, Russell Crowe, Jackson Healy, and Ryan Gosling, Holland March, the two guys working together, and they're just there's some really funny scenes, some really funny dialogue. And and Gary Rice will probably be huge in the future because it was a really good performance, yeah. and it's just a very funny movie, and I would I would totally recommend it. Yeah, I would say it's an enjoyable movie. It's a good yeah. like it's a good way to spend a couple of hours. Oh, if there's yeah, like if you want to watch something fun with a seventies vibe, of the, one of the funniest things I've seen this year, definitely. Yeah. So remember to like and subscribe if you've like enjoyed listening to that. And on the next episode, we're going to be talking about Warcraft: The Beginning. And thanks for listening.